Thank you so much. Um, it's great to be here, and uh, it's a full room, so thank you for having me. I'm very excited to tell you today about Tamer. Uh, it's a startup based in Harvard Square. I don't live in Harvard Square, I live in Waterloo, so I'm a professor in the University of Waterloo, and i just co-founder of Tamer. So I hang out with the engineering team, developing algorithms and great stuff that I'm going to tell you about today. Tamer is a, 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 the final product of a year and a half um, uh, academic prototype between MIT and Waterloo and other institutions that made its way to industry and uh, now finished round A uh, just a few uh, months ago. So we're very excited and uh, we launched in Data Beat a few months ago. So let me, uh, without uh, further ado, tell you about Tamer. Tamer is about data curation, data cleaning, data connecting, uh, uh, desperate data sources across silos. And before we go into the details of Tamer, let me tell you about the back uh, story why we started Tamer. Data curation is a big problem and it has many, many definitions, but it's all about how to extract value from the data. And for that, we create all of sort of stacks, data processing stacks, to fill in missing values, uh, uh, enforce integrity constraints, and uh, do data transformations and stuff like that. But uh, let, me, let me quickly tell you about three major technical challenges in, um, in data curation that have been uh, the main subject of academic papers and conferences and theses and so on. The first one is what we call automatic schema mapping. It's a very, very old problem, and it's about how to connect the schema between disparate data sources. And in, in the classical example are multiple table, tables talking about the same set of records, but they describe them, them differently. So I'd like to make sure that P and part number and part are talking about the same attribute of some real world entity. Uh, the, the example here is uh, uh, like a global equipment manufacturer and trying to have thousands of sources and trying to make sure that it describes these sources the same way. Very classical problem, tons of research, and we know how, uh, how hard the problem is. A second one is what we call record linkage, and it's even older. This started as old as the Census Bureau started to collect data about people, and we wanted to make sure that we're not having duplicate records. So dedupe or record linkage is an extremely old problem. And in this case, we would like to make sure that all of these records that appear in a table or in a data source represent the same real-world entity. And uh, this is an example of one of uh, Tamer first customers, Thomson Reuters, and a single dedupe project in Thomson Reuters took more than six months to work on one of these data sources. So that tells you how hard the problem is because it's a quadratic problem and all what you're doing to try to cut this, this quadratic complexity is uh, basically ad hoc methods to try to uh, enforce some uh, space pruning on the problem. The third problem that I want to uh, also allude to is missing values. This problem, where it's a problem of nulls, it's known in the community, in the academic community, as the three-valued logic problem. Because the, the problem there is there are lots of data sources that have missing values that we need to reason about in the query answers. And there are tons of research about how to interpret these nulls, how to impute these missing values. So these three data uh, curation problems have been receiving a lot of attention in the community, in the academic community where I came from, but are we missing the point? Here is an example of how these, all of this data curation problem or data cleaning problem appear in the same example. So this is a benign looking uh, table, but if you see there, there are multiple duplicates, possible duplicates, some syntactic errors, some missing values, and more complicated integrity constraint. In this case, zip code determines the city in what you call a functional dependency, but it's very clear that these two people agree on the zip code, but they, 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 uh, they disagree on the city. All of these can coexist in the same data source together. And our job as a data curation or data cleaning is to repair this database by, for example, consolidating records, imputing missing values, change syntactic errors, and sometimes uh, taking the liberty of changing ad hoc number of cells to make the data conform with integrity constraints. The problem with all of this data curation research and what triggered that research in Tamer that we have been dealing with this as a piecemeal problem, solving each problem uh, in isolation of all other problems. And unfortunately, all of them coexist in the same data. So here is some of the points missed that Tamer is trying to, uh, at least the Tamer prototype trying to address. 
The first thing is data ownership. Data is not an orphan, and it's often owned by people, data stewards, data custodians, people who have to sign on a piece of uh, paper before you can change a cell. And any data curation solution that does not uh, recognize this ownership will doom to be fail, and uh, any automatic data cleaning solution will never be adopted. And that's why tens of, uh, uh, or hundreds of paper in data curation has not been adopted in a real solution. The second practical reality or practical problem is what we call the scale renders all our solutions impractical. Why scale is a problem? Because the simplest exercise in data cleaning has quadratic complexity. Just comparing all the records to each other is, uh, um, uh, uh, is, a, is, a, is a really hard problem. I'm not, I'm not saying it's intractable, but at least super expensive to make it prohibitive to try to do it in any uh, uh, real scale. So we need to rethink everything we're doing to make sure that uh, linear or sublinear uh, algorithms have, uh, have to be the, the solution. The third one, which we're very proud at, uh, at Tamer, is data variety. The problem is we have been always assuming that the data is curated or transformed and it's in the warehouse and needs to be curated. But the chances are uh, that this would never happen in reality. In fact, you need to deal with the data in situ on premise, and that means dealing with JSON files, CSV, Excel sheets, uh, Oracle database, MySQL database, and HDFS, all of them thrown at you to be able, and, and you're required to uh, digest them or ingest them and, and curate them. So inspired by all of that, uh, 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 we started to uh, attempt to create a solution to create a data curation, data cleaning platform. But the fourth reality that hit us then was that data does not present, or the people do not present the data to us as one shot, here is the data, and you start working on it. In fact, data continuously arriving, experts continuously interacting, so it's a very iterative by design. And any data curation solution, unless you have this iterative uh, incremental uh, access to your data, will never be a reality. So in Tamer, we have to be agile, have to be high response time, and also get rid of all the uh, high startup uh, cost of a cur curation solution. So does pragmatic means being um, unprincipled and hacky and uh, just putting kitchen sink of, uh, of tools together? Absolutely not. There is tons of great problems there, and a principal approach to solve them is the only way to get uh, a solution that scale and also lend itself to a platform. So this is what architectures, and is that the word? Probably more people are used to it. I, this is introduced to me uh, only in the last few months. And uh, so I'm not used to give this type of architecture talk. I'll be shot in the, uh, in the conference for it. But uh, at the same time, it actually gave me a great opportunity to study about the various components of, of Tamer. Tamer recognized, for example, three different type of people that interact with the data. Experts who kind of own the knowledge, data stewards who own the data, and data scientists who kind of interact with the data to tell us the use case. And engaging these three different uh, type of people is extremely important in getting any solution. So here is how we tackle this problem. We recognize data ownership and we provide this non-programmatic interfaces to allow people to interact in the way they should interact, where data stewards approve uh, changes, experts provide training data for our machine learning algorithm to work and start classifying all of these connections and, uh, and uh, schema mapping exercises and dedupe and record linkage exercises. And data scientists interact and provide the use cases for us to work. The second part is scale and variety, and that had to uh, affect the way we do the actual engine in the back end. And we, re we kind of redid most of our uh, um, uh, uh, thinking or we, we rethink the way we do data cleaning by generating algorithms that try to avoid anything more than linear access to the data. And we limit our quadratic kind of processing to only small subset after heavy aggressive space pruning. And also our machine learning uh, uh, algorithm and classifiers, we work in a hierarchy of classifiers that allow us to do space pruning one at a time, recognizing the iterative uh, process of the, of the whole thing. Variety is, um, is recognized by allowing us 
by, by, uh, by creating what we call a complete data curation stack. So it have our, its own ETL, but not for the application, just for the curation. Let me tell you quickly about uh, one example problem very quickly and why it's, it's hard. This is a dedupe problem, and the classical way of doing dedupe would be to take the relation like this and have a bunch of records and create a graph with all pairwise similarity, like the one on, on, uh, on the right right there, and then you start to cluster them trying to realize what are these real-world entities that mean the same thing in, in real life. Once you have these clusters, you start to merge them and present to the user, to the consumer, the unified record or the golden record. Great and dandy, the problem is it works only on two examples. Nobody can afford to create that graph if you have more than a million records. If, and, and if it's more, then forget about it completely. The only reason that this picture exists is to realize or to understand the semantics of DDO. But in reality, there is no way that you can do this. So what we do is to try to make the DDO picture size limited to what we really think have a high chance of, of being duplicates, which is a rare event. And you can imagine all the statistical problems there. So what hit us there is how to come up with an object linkage model that realizes the interaction between schema mapping and dedupe, how to have new ideas of how to block the data to avoid the, the, the quadratic complexity, and how to have an open channel with humans all the time to verify continuously training our data, our, our models. This is the real architecture, it's at least simplified architecture of Tamer, and you can see it's a full stack of data processing uh, designed just for data curation. So there is no application, the consumer, that, the consumer of this architecture is yet another data set. So we start from uh, uh, this lake of uncurated data and we start to extract features, signals, accumulate evidence, uh, try to come up with local decisions based on our machine learning and the classifiers, and then the global decision is usually shepherded by a steward. And we continuously uh, engage humans all over the stack. This is a teaser of some screenshots of how Tamer operates. It will give you these kind of screens that unified or a fuzzy uh, schema, fuzzy unified schema of our current belief of what the schema look like of all these data sources. And based on this, we start to dedupe and cluster record from all over the, uh, the sources presented to Tamer. I'm going to ask you to, if you're interested, to visit Tamer and go to insights and video and you can access a full demo there of how it works and it's done by uh, much more skillful field engineer than me, so that um, uh, they can give you the whole, uh, the whole story. Actually, that's it. So thanks again for, uh, for having me, and uh, I'm excited about Tamer, and I encourage you all to check out our technical white papers and videos on the website. Thank you. Just one uh, quick question from me, and then uh, I'll, I'll pass it on. By the way, guys, this uh, seats over there, and you should feel free to like sit down. And if you need to leave, you can leave anytime. There's just no issue. It's a relaxed uh, community event. No, okay. <laughs> um, how do you how do you how do you position this in the um, enterprise? You 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 basically say, well, this is going to address this really hard problem, but then this needs to be integrated with other systems, and what is it, how, how do you position this in the overall sort of data workflow? That's a great question. So it's extremely important for us, at least, to understand that data curation should be on the production line of data. It's not, um, it's not a, a machine sitting on the side, outside your ecosystem, that you shove data in it and you get the curation data and then put it in the stack. Because, again, because of the incremental challenge, the iterative process of how data arrives all the time and how the applications start to consume this, we think about Tamer as a, as, a, as a good player with all the ecosystem that already exists for business intelligence and ETL. It's just up front, uh, at, the, at, the, at the front of data taming, which the term that we're trying to uh, uh, um, uh, enforce there, taming new sources as they come, sources that are usually long tail uh, many, many of them, but small enough that they don't deserve the love that traditional ways uh, give each source when you sit down and write scripts to stage them inside your warehouse or inside your business intelligence stack. This is where Tamer is positioned because you can just register sources and statistically we will connect it with all the other sources in your enterprise. Uh, that's kind of the main position. Great. Uh, 
Tony has one question and Andrew has a mic. Let's see how quickly you can run. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, actually, I'm, I have a little bit of an un unfair advantage here in that I am pretty familiar with you folks, and I'm actually very impressed and very blown, blown away by your technology. I'm Tony Bear with Elvmy Cover Big Data. Uh, we're, we're an IT analyst firm. Anyway, question I have is that we've seen, not on this stage, we've seen several other companies like, you know, Pax, uh, I think we've seen Pax, uh, but definitely Trifacta, that are also using this type of, sort of, you know, using machine learning to kind of give a boost because there's just such, you know, the scale of all is just impossible for people to, um, to digest. Um, question I have here is, what do you, what do you see, what do you see as being part of the workflow? Do you see your users primarily being somebody who's a very sophisticated, uh, I won't say data scientist, but say someone who's a very, you know, a very sophisticated data analyst? Do you see basically BI end users coming in to kind of add their insights? I mean, who do you see as basically the end user, you know, or users, you know, for your tool? As, a, as again, we, we get this question a lot, you know, obviously. Uh, consumption model of Tamer can vary a lot. Uh, but the, the sweet spot for Tamer is uh, uh, feeding into the warehouse directly, feeding into the curated data um, uh, repository, if you like, and not really to be driven by a specific data scientist need. And the reason is it's a massive undertake to, take and to connect all of these desperate sources and trying to find connections and uh, uh, kind of hidden evidence that these are the same reward entities, these are the same ontologies that describe the data which is very different than uh, an interaction where the data scientists have a specific information need and then interact with a couple of sources trying to get what's in these sources to help fulfill this need. So it's a very different interaction model. And we're, we think that the real value is in handling the scale and the variety and many, many silos with huge data sets and then feeding it in a curated data warehouse where other people can do their jazz on top of that. Is that, is that, is that answer the question? Yes, I'm happy to. Okay, if there's any other one, we have time for one quick one, otherwise we'll just uh, move on. Okay, so you're gonna be here after the event sure. uh, as well? Okay, wonderful, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much.